Okay, today we're going to have a special show. Um, we're going to talk about uh, things related to the marine terminal. So we have two uh, individuals here that are very knowledgeable on that subject. We have Ronald Kamoko Harris and William Booby Jack Ash here with us. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, we're going to try to do something a little different here today. We have a PowerPoint presentation that we've turned into a video. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to see if this will work. We're going to explain some things to you about the proposal for port expansion. And we're going to have graphics. And what I want everybody to notice, first of all, is it says Paul F. Richardson Associates Incorporated. And that's the consultant agency that the uh, longshoremen uh, obtained to provide a technical evaluation of this project. And so if you look at the lower left-hand corner, it says a greenfield marine terminal opportunity. And so I'm gonna break that into three parts. There's the part about the marine terminal, there's the part about the opportunity, and there's the part about greenfield. And if somebody could explain those three concepts and why it's called a greenfield marine terminal opportunity. The reason why it's called a greenfield is simply it's shovel ready. And most projects, when you go into it, you either have to either remove stuff. What we looked at when we looked at this greenfield was we found out that it's shovel ready and it could be up and built within an 18-month period once we get through the environmental piece. When you say that when we hired Paul Richardson, the ILA went out and asked for bids and we got Paul F. Richardson, who is well known as for the maritime industry, to come in and do a economic impact study done. And once they did the economic impact, it showed that this was a green field and that shovel ready, we've showed some of the politicians here in Delaware that it could be up and running within an 18-month period and create thousands and thousands of jobs. Okay. Good paying job. You might want to talk about that. High paying jobs. Yeah. Why are, why are they high paying jobs? And why have you been because of the union and because livable wages, I should say? It's livable wage because we have a contract with USMX, which is the major shipping lines around the world. And if you, if you look at USMX and the ILA, which is what we do, we are the deep sea ILA in Delaware. 1883, 1884, and 1694 are the deep sea ILA. We are the ones that unload every vessel that come into the Port of Wilmington. We are the ones that have a contract with the Maritime Society, which is USMX, which is the world-known shipping association around the world. They are on the west coast, on the east coast, and even down to Texas. So we unload vessels on a weekly basis for them and we have a contract which we call a master contract. We have a break bulk contract then we have a master contract which is containers. When you say a livable wage we're talking about anywhere from 25 up to $30 an hour in wages per hour which we think is a livable wage for a normal person. So we contract with them and if you look at um, Wall Street Journal last Thursday, the third largest shipping line in the world, CMG, said that they wanted to come to the Port of Wilmington. We are in negotiation with several contractors now to try to draw other shipping lines, which is containers. There's no bones about it. Containers is going to be the driven force for the future of this whole industry. The break bulk is going out. Shippers can make more money by putting more boxes on a vessel than they can break bulk. When I say break bulk, most people don't understand, but that's pallets of cargo underneath deck. Whereas though you can put 20 pallets in a container, save a lot of space, you can put anywhere on a weekly basis on dole, we average around about a thousand containers a week. So now this is attractive because it's going to be part of the port of Wilmington. Yes. And it will enhance the port. Yes. not take away from the port, and it, it's all the, it, our well, goal was well, to make well, it. Well, it's, it's, it's really a, a question of uh, diversi 
diversification of, of a cargo because the, the, the Port of Wilmington as it stands now does, as Booby Jack says, bulk and break bulk. Chilean fruit chips, we do vegetables, fruits, cars, steel, cattle, um, orange juice, super sacks, bags of ore. That's the cargo. We do not, as of yet, have the ability to do containers, meaning dry boxes of containers, and we mean it by that those containers that have the cargo that go to J.C. Penney's, Sears, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's. Lowe's, you name it, those consumer goods, like everything you wear, you look at most, let me say 98% of what we wear, what we look at, what we talk on, what we build with, what we ride in comes to this country from somewhere else on a ship. You know, it's, it says in the back of the label, not made in America, you know, and those are the cargoes that we want because that is the largest growing industry in the country today and it generates more jobs than any other industry, bar none, in terms of the jobs it generates. Um, there, there are people who watch this show throughout, of all, throughout all of Newcastle County. And so just to make sure folks understand, what is a marine terminal? A marine terminal is where these large vessels, ships, we call them, come in and unload cargo from another country, or it could be from the same United States. But normally it's from a foreign country that comes in, say for instance, the bananas come from either South America or either Central America, and they, they're shipped up here and they come in large volumes. And, and that's what we do. I mean, all types of cargo, like Kamoko just said, we handle on a weekly basis. And that's what a marine terminal is. It brings in large vessels, and normally they're berthed. Right now, the Port of Wilmington has seven berths. And from my understanding, they're gonna get ready to work on berth five and six is under, um, and getting ready to go under a new phase of, of turning it over and making it into where we can actually get a container crane rolled down to that port. Right now, it's not feasible to run a crane all the way down because we don't have the tracks. Now, there, there are people in the viewing audience who may not know what a berth is. <coughs> okay. So what's a berth? A berth is, I would say, anywhere from two football fields to a football and a half lengthwise to cover a ship. We top ships at berths. That's what we consider a berth. And at, at the Port of Wilmington, the state side ties up the vessels on a weekly basis. A berth is roughly, I would say, a football and a half length, if I break it down in those kind of terms. It's, it's like just, so for average folks, it's like the park, a parking place for a car. A berth is a parking place Through for a ship. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Okay, we're going to go to screen number two. Okay, on this presentation, it basically says why, and it talks about employment opportunities, the regional economic impact, and the strategic development plan for the state of Delaware. So could someone kind of chime in on those three topics? We're within uh, 400 miles of the, most of the population of this country. And uh, that's why it is becoming a hub for everybody in the world to ship here. Right in the center is the city of Wilmington. Uh, we get 2% of the market. I know more about, from these guys teaching me than I ever <laughs> wanted to know from the day I got in office. But we get 2% of the, the, the ship containers, and the rest passes us and goes up to Philly. And we have 495 coming into the entrance where it takes a, a day to tractor trailer get in and out of Philly, and probably another day for the ship to get to Philly. And then there, not easy that, to get that, in there. That's why, and that's why we are attracted. We're, we are an attractive place to a, an investor in terms of um, um, shipping and, and the whole shipping industry, and the employment opportunities they generate from that. We're talking about tens of thousands of jobs. You're talking about a, a situation where, um, if you, you you bring in, we're talking about what 1.5 million. The the potential to bring in 1.5 million TEU. A TEU is a 20-foot equivalent container. That's a 20-foot box. We're talking about a million and a half of those. Right now, we handle probably, what, two, 300,000 TEUs with yeah. Dole and Jaquita. Yes. That generates, you know, you can see in, five in, times in the chart, you can see in the chart that the, the 
it generates almost like 4,000 direct jobs and something like 16,000 indirect jobs. That's meaning direct, indirect, and induced jobs. 16,000 just for 300,000 TEU. Now, multiply that times four. You know, so that's the type of jobs that can be created you know, with, 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 this, with this project. You're talking about construction job, it has to be built. So you're talking about many jobs with the construction trades. You know, in terms of bricklayers, cement finishers, pipe fitters, electricians, electricians you name it. So the, it's gonna create hundreds of construction jobs. Also, you're talking about, um, right now we, we probably have no about, it's probably about three, um, I'm, I'm trying, trying, to, trying to get a sense well, of Let me go uh, into the yeah. uh, regional economic impact. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, four or five years ago, we was talking about the deepening of the Delaware to 45 feet. Mm -hmm. And I give credit to the senators and the congressmen. We got that done. And they, from what I've been told, it was 31 more million that was appropriated for the finishing of the deepening of the channel. My question to some of the politician is, if we deepen the channel and then we lose all the work to either Jersey or Philadelphia, what do we do as far as the economic impact for the state of Delaware? Now, when these ships got to go right by what we are trying to get done to go to another facility, whereas though we could take that regional in impact, economic impact, mm -hmm. and create jobs here for the state of Delaware. I was reading in the day's paper how the budget committee is struggling to try to meet the budget with the tax. Well, if you create, I'm just guessing, 10,000 jobs, and they're decent paying jobs. Well, I'm pretty sure those people wouldn't mind paying their fair share of taxes. So that also offsets the budget that we're talking about that we're having problems with even now and in the future. Wage taxes, big, big. Yes. You know, it, it's a massive increase. And the strategy development is we hired the Paul F. Richardson to go out and do a study, and we have brought it to some of the, the public figures and showed them once we get this environmental impact study which costs roughly about five hundred thousand dollars this could be shovel ready and they could start to dig in if we had this done within three months and we've been after this since november now trying to get this this five hundred thousand to get this stuff done if the environment piece is done wall street is it, so funny that we had one of the people that was interested in, in this project bought the land across the river at, at the dupont plant because we was dragging our feet here in Delaware. And if Paulsboro get up and running, it's going to be a sad day for the Port of Wilmington, whether people believe it or not. They will take the existing cargo that we have now. Anybody will go to a new facility versus an old facility. Okay, we're going to move to the next uh, PowerPoint slide. On this slide, there's three concepts that people have been talking about. One is what they call a public-private partnership. And that has to do more with how this project is implemented. And funded. And funded. And so in this particular instance, even though it has not been, you know, determined in concrete how it's going to be done, in general, the concept is you have government involved, you have private sector actors involved, and they work together in a partnership to accomplish something that neither one of them could really do alone. That's it, generally speaking. And so the next issue here is, is there, is there a request for public dollars? And in the initial phases of this, it was just mentioned, some money was needed to determine if the land is, uh, you know, in the condition that we think it's in. But this really would not be funded by the state of Delaware uh, were we to build an additional port. So if anybody would like to comment on that further. With the P3, what we tried to do was, we, it was a question of an ask. And we asked the state of Delaware if we could get $500,000 to do a environmental impact study. In our minds, and in Paul Richardson, who did the study, that would be the only money that the taxpayers would have to put up from the state of Delaware. Once we had those permits in place, the Goldman Sachs of the world, the fortunes of the world would come in and the Canadian school teachers just put up, I think it was $4 billion in an investment in a terminal. So the state of Delaware at that point, it wouldn't be any taxpayer money coming out to fund this. 
and we estimate it will cost $400 million to get this built. And even with the equipment, we're looking at roughly $600 million, which it will be no public dollars. It would all come from a private entity. And the land would always be in the public sector, so it would, it would be turned back over. The land would either be purchased or leased, and it would be turned back over to the state where it would never end up in a private hand. It's a 50-year, usually, that's what they uh, and, and, and it would be a good investment for the state. I mean, that you give up a half a million dollars to gain 10 or 15 or 20 times that in terms of jobs, uh, um, taxes. I mean, to me, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer to put up that little bit of money compared to when you talk about a product that's going to be worth a half a billion dollars and going to create tens of thousands of jobs. Okay, on this same um, PowerPoint screen, the issue is raised as to the difference in this project versus the last project that was recently rejected, the Kinder Morgan. Is this the same thing over again or is this something different to make sure that the public understands? This is totally different from the Kinder Morgan project. This project would never go into a private partner's hand where he actually controls and get it would always be in the public's hands that's why we said that's why it's called a p3 it's a public private partnership whereas though it will always always be in the hands of the state it would never or whoever the the county whether it be the county or the state would always be in a public entity's hand and that's why we was so adamant about doing this we met with Kendall Morgan four different times and they never showed their hand what they were going to do as far as how they were going to branch this out. And we, we are not knocking this because we feel like we have contracts with the carriers. Even if this was built, with us having contracts with the carriers, a private person can't come in there and unload a vessel. It will have to be under the ILA guidelines because we have master contract contract with every carrier that's under the USMX flag. And most of the carriers, just like I was saying earlier about CGM, now they're world known. They're the third world largest carrier in the world. And they, in, in Wall Street Journal, last Thursday was talking about they want to come to the Port of Wilmington. And they are asking questions, is this real or is this just something fake that is coming out? And we, we've been telling them, we are hoping that this is real. We can get everybody on board. This will work for the state of Delaware. And that's okay. why we, we know... If we get this port built, we're going to have customers. It's, it's, it's no doubt about it. Just like Booby Jack said in the Wall Street Journal, they said they want to come to Wilmington. But right now, we don't have a facility for them to come to. That's why we, we got to have, have this facility. This facility has to happen. Okay, on our next screen, we have a picture of uh, President Obama while he was here at the Port of <coughs> Wilmington announcing the Build America initiative or investment initiative. And so, um, would you? That, that's where the, that's where that? the P3 comes from. Where he said, uh, basically, the United States doesn't have the money anymore to operate these kind of things. For those that find partners, and we had a visit from the president's group. They spent a day with us, with you guys, and they said this is phenomenal. They would like this to be the first public-private partnership with the president's initiative since he announced it here. And. Uh, we spent a day with they spent a day with you and they, they love the idea and they love the concept. Mm -hmm. So that meant he's going to bring uh, some money to the table, make the regulatory process a lot quicker, and help us speed it because the nation needs more ports, not just for the imports, but the farmers. We found out throughout the country on this side of Mississippi are looking for a port to get out of, including Delaware farmers. So it's going to attract. We haven't added that number onto. We're just talking about the numbers of jobs for the imports. But we, we have 29 states or something like that that are interested in shipping out of here. So you can, you can imagine the, the jobs that will be created by that. So at the, at the end of the day, this project is totally aligned with what the president wants to do as far as economic development initiatives. And uh, we're at the perfect place, at the perfect time, with the perfect project. And so it's very seldom that things just align in that way. But none of us knew that the president was going to have this new initiative. This idea um, preceded this. You found this plot of land 
before this initiative was ever announced. And so, you know, you guys got together, thought about it, had a, had a great idea, bounced it off the county exec. He was all in with it. And then all of a sudden, here comes the President of the United States saying, I have a special project to provide technical support for projects just like this. Yes. You couldn't ask for anything more than that. And, and, and we are really, I mean, we are really baffled as to why we've had the resistance we've had in trying, trying to get this money to do this thing. Because every politician that runs for any office anywhere, on the, one of the main things they talk about, they want to create jobs. That's what they all say. We want to create jobs. We have the project and the program to create jobs. And we have the facts and the data to prove that this is not no pie in the sky dream, that this can happen and should happen. You know, so we, we, we're just baffled that the president came here, gave his presentation, we got a project in place. President sent his people down here from the Department of Transportation, U.S. Department of Transportation, met with us, rode around us, said this was an excellent idea and an excellent concept and that they could not wait to work with us and to see this happen. Which and is why you're here tonight and you're going to the communities all yes. throughout Wilmington and Newcastle yes, County. Yes, we want the people Tell to know about what's that initiative. On. you got Wilmington uh, Councilwoman Board, Newcastle County Council's coming on board. Yes. So you're going to build a grassroots for support now. Yes. The, the federal DOT, when they came <coughs> here, and, and we rode around with them, like you said, Tom, they couldn't believe that this was a green field, that they were so happy to get a project that they could work on and then have to go through a lot of red tape. That wasn't polluted. Yes. Yep. They, they were happy with it, and they like, when can we get started? And I talked to Ed Zemner, who works for Paul Richardson. They call him at least once or twice a week. How are your progress going? What is going on? Are we ready to move? These are the things that, like Kamoko just said, it's baffling to us. We're at the point that we can retire in the next six years. So this is going to be for the young people of the state of Delaware that are looking for a job in the next five to ten years. And we are so baffled as to why we can't move this. I will put this project up against anybody that comes up and want to challenge the facts in this. What we're going to do is we're going to now kind of show you in the next PowerPoint, kind of give you an overview of the strategy, okay? Everyone knows that there's currently a port called the Diamond State Port that's run by the Diamond State Port Corporation, what everybody knows as the Port of Wilmington. So step number one is to maintain and grow that port facility. Yes. That's one part of the strategic plan associated with this. The other part of it you'll see on the left is the development of this greenfield site yes. as a container port, which means it would not compete with the current port operations because they it's two different types of cargo, and I'm going to let you guys get into that in a minute. Okay. And then the third prong is the General Motor site which is a site that we learned was in play at the county and we basically said put in a bid to try to purchase it to make all of these pieces fit together. That's that kind of what started it when you had the idea of trying to control our destiny is to buy GM because why we know it's connected to the port and you came down and said why are you buying GM? I said well it's connected to the port it has 10 rails behind it and we want to try to make something good out of it. And you said, who owns that land next to the port? And that's what started all this. Uh, this was your idea. And uh, it, uh, it took legs right away. And, and, uh, so if, either, if any of you want to talk about the, 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 the game plan from the current port to the new Greenfield port and the GM, if you guys want to talk about how those three pieces I'll fit together. I'll start and then let Kamoko chime okay. in. What we, at the existing port, I sat on the advisory board, and, and I thank the governor for, governor for appointing me. But what we found out in the last couple of meetings, we also had a meeting with the port director. And we're working on this one contract right now, which will make the existing facility at 90% capacity. When you say you, most places, when you're 70% capacity, you're full. This will be at 90%. You can't put anything else in there. So with this new greenfield, what we was hoping to do is take the new container lines that we will have that want to come to the Port of Wilmington, put them at the greenfield. 
it won't touch one ounce of cargo that's at the existing port and link them together. And it will still be Diamond State Port. It'll be north and south. The Greenfield, at, I mean, GM would be the distribution center <coughs> that we could take and put boxes on rail from the Greenfield or the existing port, have them rail down to the GM plant, either have them stripped out, put on trucks, put in on different rails, and either sent out to the Midwest. And we was hoping that we could link it with the farmers bringing either grain back or taking Delaware grain, shipping it out of this new facility, which the, the farmers downstate would benefit from. And, and to put this in the context of the new shipping schemes in terms of the movement of cargo and the transportation system, right now they, the, the containers is a part of a new plan to move cargo and it's called the intermodal transportation system. Intermodal is it, the, the box comes off a ship and it either goes on a truck or a rail, you know, and it moves from the truck or the rail, like Booby Jack said, like to GM to the distribution center, you know, which again, when you talk about jobs, so you're talking about hundreds of truck drivers, hundreds of truck drivers that move these cargo. When you talk about a ship the, and, and the size of the ships that we will start getting would be like 8,000 versus a ship that, that carries 2,000 now. The largest ships that come into to Delaware right now in terms of the port it's 2,000 TEU. We're talking about being out on the Delaware, those ships are going to be, each ship is going to be 8,000 plus TEU. So that you can e imagine the manpower it takes to do 8,500, you know, versus 2,000. But the intermodal system is, is that the cargo keeps moving. It comes off the ship, it hits the truck, and it hits the rail. It goes to the distribution center, which creates another two, three hundred or more jobs because the distribution centers usually work 24 hours a day because that's how when, it, when the ship comes off, when a box comes off a ship that's at our port and they put it on the rail and it goes to the GM plant, I mean that box may be from China, it may have cell phones in it and some of those cell phones might go to Sears and some of them might go to J.C. Penney's so that distribution center will unload that box and then put the stuff that's supposed to go to Sears here, and then when the Sears truck comes, it will load the Sears truck. When the J.C. Penney's truck comes, it would have the section of the, of, the, of the warehouse where those cargos are for J.C. Penney's, and it would load, and that's why it's called a distribution center. It would distribute the cargo to the customers, you know, which, like I'm saying, creates another 24-7, they work 24-7, three or 400 people a shift. So we're talking about thousands of jobs. We mean thousands of jobs. When we say it, it's going to create thousands of jobs. And the kind of jobs it's going to create is going to help probably wipe out this crime situation in Wilmington to, just to tie these things up. Because anytime you have 30 or 40 percent of your young people between 18 and 35 getting up every morning with no, no job to go to and the only place they got to go is on the corner, what you have? You have you them coming down the port now. You yes. got a perfect situation for, for development of, of crime because people are going to do what they have to do to think to, for, for, to survive. And if the drug dealer is the best job they're going to get, then that's right. what they're going to do. You've told me you've seen people come down for jobs and you see them out yes. on the street four hours later when yes. they get turned away. Yes. So that's, that is the solution to crime. Yes. It is the solution yes, to because the problem. We have a lot poverty. of ships in. You come down past the hall in the morning, you'll see you'll see a whole, the whole parking lot full of young people trying to get a job because they want to work. Most of those guys and women want to work. And then those that don't get a job, you ride through the community later on in the day and you see them on the corner involved in, 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 in all, all other kind of stuff. And you, you have know. people from Smyrna. You have people from Suffolk. Yes, we have people, people coming up all, yes. we, all up and down We the have state. people come actually from Seaford every day to go every to work day. in the Port of Wilmington. It's the only jobs that pay good money. Yes. left at the port and you buy your house you buy a car you yes piece of the american dream things yeah. turn around i mean it, you lost gm you lost christ you lost um delaware city you know and that was Steel that plant, was 10 probably well. 10 to fifteen thousand jobs when you add up the, the battery plant and the sofa plant Mostly and everything seat, you know and we could make that up with this project absolutely we'll bring back those 10 15 20 thousand jobs with this project okay um, on the next screen, what we're going to do now is we're going to drill down and let you actually see what this could look like. So this is kind of the bird's eye view in this picture. So there's the two blue spots 
are the important parts for you to look at. And um, the, the, the blue spot at the top is the existing port operation. And then at the bottom of the page, that blue section is the proposed expansion of the Diamond State Port Corporation at the Greenfield location. If you notice, where you see the water, there's a bridge, okay? And that's the bridge that takes you across to New Jersey, Delaware Memorial Bridge. Yes. So this is actually, this new facility would be south of the Delaware Memorial Bridge. And then I'm gonna let our ILA experts explain to you uh, quickly the significance of that, and then we're gonna move to the next slide. The significance of south of the Delaware Mem Memorial Bridge is the key component is air draft. Ships don't have to go underneath a bridge. And if you look at it coming from the Atlantic Ocean all the way up, there is no bridges that that ship had to go under. So the cost of that ship, it saves time and the pilot as far as money and they, it, ships pay a toll almost just like a car do going across a bridge. They have but to get a tugboat. Yes, they have yeah. to get tugs to make sure it don't hit either side of the bridge. If we have this project done south of the bridge, we don't have to worry about that. The turnaround time, even though that's a short space, believe it or not, that's time and money saved to the shipper by docking a ship south of that bridge. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're going to move to the next picture. Uh, in this picture, just so that you understand, they've identified what they call a north and south area, I guess. Is that where the, is that the area that you guys describe where they place uh, sediment or something? Yes, the, the, the south port is north of the bridge, right where we have an auto berth. And actually what the Corps of Engineers has got that land and they're dumping spoils in there where they dredge at. And the Corps is not gonna give that up. We've had people to check it. The Corps is gonna keep that for the next 20 years. When people say they can go north of the bridge, there's no way that the Corps of Engineers is going to give that piece of land up because that's where they dump their spoils at. Right behind Cherry Island? Yes. Okay. And then down below is another place where they dump. You see, see Cherry that? Island and right there by the auto berth is where the other place is where the Corps dumps all their spoils at. So everything in this picture for the viewing audience is north of the Delaware Memorial Bridge. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the spoils are important because dredging a river isn't something that you just do one time. You have to maintain it. So every once in a while they have to come come and... Just about kinda. every year they do maintenance dredging in the Christiana because of the silt that runs back in in order to keep that channel. Now, the, the Christiana, which you see on this picture, it can only go 38 feet. You can't go 45 there. Most people ask them, why can't you do that? Because if you go any deeper, then you would upset the existing docks that's there right now. Okay. Um, so now let's go to the next picture so that you can kind of see the concept, I guess, at a, from another perspective. Picture. This one here. What this one does is this one adds in the GM plant in the upper left-hand corner. So earlier when you heard our guests talking about the original Diamond State Port Corporation location, which is in the upper right-hand corner, and then the second part of this is below the Delaware Memorial Bridge where the Greenfield is, is where you have that blue area for the expansion of the port. Yes. And then up in the upper left-hand corner is the GM plant. Yes. So if you were kind of up in the sky, this kind of lets you see how all three of those would be connected. And there's rail lines that connect all of these facilities with each other. So we really have everything we need with those. You and three. I, we've worked on uh, the piece between the port is Crota. We have a 100 foot, 50 foot easement for rail and traffic that will tie to the port. So it'll be one unified port. So there'll be no argument as to who's running. it. So basically what he's talking about is there would be rail and road. road connection between the two port facilities. So there would be a connection between those two blue items on the right-hand side. And that's critical. Right, yeah. Critical to making all so of this the work. That's, yes. the, that's the intermodal system. And that would be the hub. The GM plant would be the hub 
as far as the distribution center. And when you're talking about jobs, you could put three shifts in there, just like they used to have at Chrysler and at the GM plant. Whereas though they're unloading car box cars, or either containers, putting it, whether it's in a regular truck or putting it on a different rail, setting it up to go to the Midwest. Okay, mm -hmm. now, sometime I hear you guys talk about perishables and things that are dry in containers. And so, would it be accurate to say that the current port is the one that has all of the dole and yeah, the, the bananas and yeah, stuff? Yeah, they the have perishable. all the perishable cargo. And yes. they may use containers with perishables sometime, right? Yes. Yeah, refrigerated. And then the new port facility would have the dry, it would have dry box. television, cell phones, right. things of that nature. It's Which light industry, and they've said the only and they thing can that comes off it yes. is salt water. Yes. And, 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 those can, and they can sit in a stack for months. Perishables, you have to move them within a certain amount of time. That's why they call them perishables, because then they will go bad. But these dry boxes, you can sit a box of clothes in, on a dock for months. You know, so yeah. I mean, we, you know. the dry boxes you can stack because it's easier. Right. If you take the weight of fruit, whether it's bananas or whatever, it's heavy. And most of the operations in the Port of Wilmington right now, when it comes to containers, is on wheels. It's a wheel operation. You're going to yeah. show that in the next one of the next few slides. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Why it's a beneficial port? You can see it, and I'll let you explain the Suez Canal and Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this picture, I guess, is mm -hmm. kind of a global view of how things move throughout the world. And so, kind of in a quick summary, what's the point of this particular diagram? Geographically, if you look at the point, you're looking at where it, most cargoes come from, either Asia or when it comes through the Suez Canal, and then you look straight across geographically, Delaware sets in the right place Directly. in the United States. Right. If you look at the Suez Canal and look at geographically, Wilmington, Delaware sits right across from it if you look at a map. You say it's our birthright. It's our birthright, well, yes. It's, it's, it's well, directly across from the location, Suez Canal. Yeah. Ship just goes straight across the Atlantic yes. and you run, you be right in Wilmington. So for our viewing audience, if you look at the left-hand side, can you put that picture back up for me? If you look on the left hand side, left hand side of this diagram, you'll see the picture of the United States. On the west coast is on that's the left hand side of the United States. But if you come to the east coast, yes. you see all of those little arrows that point to the east coast that come straight across and from the south, and then the stuff coming from Asia, Asia yes. that can either mm -hmm. go over to the to west, west coast, coast or that can come across where that big thick U-shape is and then cut through the canal so, yes. to the I mean, east coast. Yeah. Right. Well, if you all haven't been listening, on the west coast they've had so many labor problems that there's a lot of shippers who are tired of going to the west coast and they'd like to come to the east coast. And we just need to make sure we're ready and provide a place for them to come because we're perfectly situated, as they said, once they come through that canal we're, the, we're pretty much the closest place. We're straight across. Right in the middle. We actually had shippers calling and because they were so frustrated about the West Coast having their ships to sit out to sea. Once they got inland, six weeks, six to eight weeks trying to get unloaded because of the labor problems they had out there. And, 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 and I know I mentioned the problems on the West Coast, but that's unfair for me to say it that way because that's, that's their problem. Right. On the East Coast and throughout this world, the Wilmington workers are known to be the best, most productive, best qualified workers. There's not a whole lot of labor problems. You know, there's always issues that pop up, but not where the whole ports are shut down for six months and stuff like that. So we have excellent workers with an excellent reputation, and that needs to be stated. If I can give you an example, we had Dole and Stuart Javelin left the company that worked for Dole. He was the head guy here in Delaware for Dole. He came to us about a year and a half ago before Dole signed a new contract and asked us, could we go to Paulsburg? Well, geographically, Paulsboro is past the Delaware state line. Our jurisdiction go from the state line of Delaware back out to the ocean. 
And once we told him, say, Stuart, we're sorry, but that's out of our jurisdiction. They agreed to stay here in Delaware. Dole was headed to South Jersey, and they had made arrangements because they knew they had Dole. Once Stuart found out that our labor force couldn't go over there, he decided to stay here in Delaware and that they signed a 15-year lease to stay here in the state of Delaware. Okay. All right, our next screen. What we have here is just kind of a, a summary, I guess, of the major areas. They call it the North American Container Port System and Gate Regions. So, as you can see, the larger those circles, the more Container the greater uh, number of containers, TEUs, you guys called them, yes. that would come into that area. So right. you can see that Delaware is located where there's quite a few large circles on the East Coast. Oh, and right you can further middle. talk about right. that. What, what you see there in this diagram is New York is the big circle coming down from the red dot. Hampton Roads or Virginia is the circle at the bottom. We are the little circle in, in that little corner. We are less than 1% of the volume of containers that are unloaded on the East Coast. What we are saying is give us a container terminal. We become a major player on the East Coast. New York gets 65% of the, the cargo comes in. Hampton Roads gets roughly 35%. Delaware is getting less than 1% of the cargo that we could be handling in the Port of Wilmington if we had this new facility up and built. And you give us that port, we will be a big circle. That's, that's what <laughs> yeah. it means. We will be a big circle just like Virginia and New York. Okay, and now as you go to the next pi picture, you'll see that in the Midwest, that yellow area, yes. that's where there's a large concentration of people in the Midwest that have a large need for goods yes. to you know, uh, be brought to them. And a lot of the stuff would hit that East Coast area, which is in red, first. And so what we're really looking at is if we can get more stuff in the red region come into Wilmington, then we're part of the distribution system that gets it out to the people that live out there in the in yellow the area, in yes. the Midwest. It's growing. So this all fits into a, a large uh, set of eco economic circumstances and we're sitting here with everything is in our favor, but we're sitting back watching everything happen all around us if we're not careful. Yeah, and, and to explain this diagram more, that Chicago area right now from the West Coast, this is why a lot of those shippers were mad because they lost billions of dollars. They would unload their vessels on the West Coast at LA or, 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 or one of those other ports and they would truck or train to the Chicago area and it would take 30 to 33 hours. From Wilmington, it takes 12 hours to drive from Wilmington to Chicago. Or the rail, it takes 12 or 14 hours. So I'm saying, so the economic advantage of where we are, you know, makes a lot of sense to shippers. Yeah. Okay, the next screen, we're gonna show this one to you. And what this is, is this just kind of a picture that kind of lets you see what the new container port would look like. If you look in the blue area, there's two ships. We're going to start with two berths, but there's room for three. Right. And I think you we'll be using out. three before you too long. build four. Yeah. Right. So in this picture, then you see the center area. That's where the containers would be. And then in the upper part of that is where you start to have what he called the intermodal, intermodal transportation mm -hmm. components yes. with the uh, train tracks and everything there right. in the green. So right. we're going to flip to the next one and, and you're going to, we're going to zoom in. We're going to go a little faster here. But this here is an additional kind of zoom in of what it would look like, what the site would look like. Yes. Okay, this one just shows one ship there. And then we'll go to the next picture. We're going to start to kind of zoom in so you can really see what this Get looks a like. Description of art. Okay, now. In this picture here, if one of you would like to describe this at the next level. What, what this shows is a ship being discharged. They're being put into the stacks. And then if you look on the back side, once they go into the stacks, we have machines that will actually put them out here on the rail. Either you have them railed in and further back on the opposite side, you'll see where we're actually stacking them, putting them on trucks. And they're either being railed out or trucked out. 
Okay, we'll go to the next one. That's going to even zoom in a little bit more so you can see what this would look like. Basically, we just have a couple of more pictures that we were going to show you that kind of let you really get a zoom in and see what the stacks look like. So basically, it's a modern port that's going to employ a lot of good people, and it's going to pay them, you know, not a service job salary like what everybody gets now, but uh, where you can raise a family and bring your kids down for the summer and get a good paying job. That's a livable wage. That's what it's been known for at the Longshoremen. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to show the public that right now at the current Port of Wilmington, it's roughly 320,000 TEUs. That creates 16,000 indirect and direct jobs. It shows a tax base and everything. It's showing on there now a screen. That's where they're stacking that. Yes, that's how that, it works. That's where the stacks are. We okay. can go to the next, next one, one to zoom in at the next level. So that just kind of shows a more detailed view where the trucks would be and where the rail is. Yes, that Looking shows it from the other yeah. side. Right. That's this is the opposite side showing where right. the rail comes in at and where the truckers would be on the back side picking up boxes. We can go to the next one. We can go to the next two. Actually, this here is go another to, go view. to the last one. All right. We, great. we only got a couple more minutes of what Let's Booby Jack was got well, getting yeah. into. Okay. And then this here is just a close zoom in of the uh, rail. Your engineer just did a fabulous job. And then we'll pause right here for a second. This is uh, the second to the last one. This here just kind of talks about the public-private partnership. Yes. On the left, you got a landholder. Those relationships. And then you yeah. have um, private stakeholders. You have people that are in the shipping business. You have people in the financing business. You have people that are carriers, railroads, all the people who have a stake in this. Yeah, that green. And then you have yeah. the state of Delaware, Diamond State Port Corporation is the public agency, and they all kind of come together and work out the details to make a Okay, point. and then the last chart, last uh, screen, kind of summarizes. Yeah, that's what Blue Jack was talk, getting into. This is the screen that I was telling you about. At the Port of Wilmington right now, it's 329,000 TEUs. That creates indirect and direct 16,000 jobs. And then it breaks down the tax base of each one of them jobs, and how if we are talking about a new facility with Four a million, million five containers, do the math on that. That's, that's if it's sixteen thousand right. with three hundred and some containers, what would it do with a million four? Well, you know, summarize it. You come off the ocean. You don't go under any bridges. You're at the center of the population. You have I not, you have four ninety five at your entrance, so it doesn't take you twenty minutes to get the trucker out. And you have a road where five thousand truckers a day they thought would be coming out. Cherry Lane, and we're employing. You know, that's a very low number. It could be anywhere from twenty to forty thousand. Oh yeah. Uh, we ask. Uh, we've got to get this going for a lot of reasons. Yeah, we, we should be up and running now. We and should have shovels in the ground. Yeah, we should have been started. Well, it's important for the life of the city, life of the state, and, and we're we're now going to go out and talk to everyone. And 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 like we say, our our position is that any politician or anybody running for anything. Should should be on board with this project. You did well if, with Wilmington. If they're talking the about night. if they're talking yes. about creating jobs and they're serious about creating jobs, then this is the projects where those jobs are going to be created because we haven't seen any plan or any project or any proposal yet that comes anywhere close to this project that we're talking about. So at the end of the day, we need you and the public to absorb what you learned tonight and to be an advocate for this project because Delaware hasn't been very successful when it comes to expanding the industries that we have. We're starting to lose a lot of our industries. This is an industry that the state of Delaware is actually in. It owns its own marine terminal and hopefully the state of Delaware will see fit to expand its operations and to provide a major boost to the entire economy from the north all the way to the south of Delaware. Did I'd like anybody to have anything thank you, you Sam, say? for the work you did on it. And I'd like to thank our knowledgeable guest, Booby Jack Kamoko, who have been driving this, and, and, I, and I agree with him. Uh, I can't understand why we can't get this thing going. We're going to keep working on it, keep working right. on it, and uh, we need the help of the, the people out there. 
because unlike most economic development, it often starts from the top, if you will. But this idea actually came from the people who work at the port who saw this opportunity. Well, that's the way it's been. And I'd like to thank you for the job you provide. You took a major cut to keep these fruit. We're the largest fruit importer in the, in the country. Oh, Seven yeah. point four million dollars a year. We took a pay cut so that we could keep Dole and Chiquita at the port of Wilmington. And when most a lot people of for the said that we couldn't get it done, the men and women at the port of Wilmington realized in order to keep their job, we had to do something and we did what we had to do. Thank you all very much. Thank you.